Hello, so there's been some confusion on how to actually install Star Wars Galaxy Emulator on Windows. I thought this was pretty self-explanatory, but whatever. So, uh, first thing I'm going to assume is that you have Windows 10 installed. I assume you have the professional version, because we're going to go ahead and um, depend on WSL. Uh, so, let's just switch over to here. And we can see that this is just a freshly installed copy of Windows 10. Uh, I'm using the latest, so it's 22H2. I think it's also the final. So let's go back to Control Panel. So if we check the browser, so we're going to go ahead, go to Programs, and we're going to turn the Windows subsystem for Linux feature on. So it should be saying, so programs, Windows feature. We scroll down here to Windows subsystem for Linux, hit OK. It's going to search for files, and it's going to want to reboot. So that takes us through phase one of the install. OK, so the next thing we're going to need is the files to be downloaded which I have on my local machine. I'm using VMware, so I'm cheating, so I'm going to pass those through. Okay, so we've installed the uh, Windows Linux subsystem, because you can see we've got a penguin down here. But we have no, uh, no database and no Linux installed. So first we're going to install Maria. So we go next, we accept, basically choose everything. I'm going to set the password to password. And I'm going to enable root access remotely. If you're, I'm just doing this for me. <laughs> In the real world, you probably don't want that. And you probably want a stronger password than password. Anyways, we're going to install as a service. I'm going to set this to port 10,000. Because I want to listen on something different. Again, you can change these, but you just have to know what you set them to. All right, and we're going to go ahead and install. Say yes. And then it will copy the files. It even starts the service. And we're up and running. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Now the next step is we're going to go ahead and install the, uh, the Linux uh, distribution. So we'll make a directory called Star Wars. I already have one. All right, so I guess that's kind of cheating. We'll just clear it. So we have a directory called Star Wars. Now we're going to do the import and the... Um, Syntax isn't too crazy, it's just I always forget. And that's why I wrote it down. So it's WSL, import SWGMU for the name, and then the path is to this tar file. Oh, I guess I missed something up. So it's import SWGMU. Oh, you have to give it the location, right. Should read my notes better. Anyways, this will take a few minutes. So I'm going to pause and then we'll just jump back when it's uh, done importing. Okay, so it's finished importing. It took about three minutes, four minutes. Of course, this is all NVMe and um, it's kind of fast, so your time may uh, differ. So if we do a WSL list HD, and we should see it's currently stopped. It's version one. That's kind of the way I want it because uh, um, version one is the most compatible. It runs on everything. Uh, I'm going to make a new shortcut, and it's just going to be WSL D SWGMU. This is going to be the um, SWGMU Linux. So now if I double click in here, it's going to go ahead and start the subsystem and log me in. And then if I go ahead and list, you see it's running. Um, so the reason why I gave it names is just in case you want to install other Linux distributions or other things, because you can run more than one user set. You're not restricted to just a single one. Uh, most likely when you <laughs> install this, it's going to be out of date. 
So you can actually just run the uh, app to get update, up get upgrade, upgrade if I can spell it. You don't really have to do it. It should basically run out of the box. Uh, give it a moment. Let's just see how far out of date we are. So you can see, since I uh, did this, this is how out of date it is. I'm just going to go ahead and let it run the updates. Again, you don't really have to. It's configured to run as is, but just for completionist sake, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Okay, so while that's thinking, the next step is we Beyond. have to edit the, uh, the SQL. So this might be a little scary, hopefully not too bad. So in our Star Wars directory, we go to root fs and then root uh, and then Star Wars SQL. So these are the main scripts that are used to generate the uh, the database. Uh, I think you can maybe open with a Notepad. So I don't really need it all the time, but I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, notepad. Okay, so it's going to want the IP address of the hosts. You can get away with uh, local hosts because we're on the same machine, but you could potentially run the database on another computer. Now, the public address, that's going to be the address the server actually listens to. So in my example, I'm not going to be on the Internet. I'm just going to be running on my local IP address. So I just get that from ipconfig. I guess you just got to know which one's local. Uh, might be on your Wi Fi or set up in your network or in some way. But basically, this script will run through setting roots, passwords, password, the SQL host that's a local host, the port's 10,000. Yeah, pretty much that should do it. So we'll just wait for this thing to finish updating. And again, you really don't have to update. I just want to show that it can update. Um, I guess years from now, when the uh, when this 22 version of Ubuntu is out of date, you may not want to touch the update at all because uh, it's potential that it could break completely. So it might be best to leave this thing as a snapshot of where it was. Of course, with it being all virtual, you can, you know, install different instances, test. You don't have to destroy your main set. All right, so we should be wrapping up the update soon. Yeah, Python 3 is always going to be the problem. And then some of this stuff will fail, like the init ramfs stuff, because we're not on a real kernel. Doesn't matter. Alright, so we're in the root home directory. It says Star Wars. Alright, and then we're going to go ahead and go into the SQL. Now we're going to run the script that we... Uh, Edited the re init. And then that should be it. It should have uh, created the database. Uh, now we need to edit the, uh, the engine config. So it's in conf. And it's going to be the config.lua. So same deal, open with, don't need it all the time, notepad, okay. So the database host, we're going with 127, oops, numlock was off, 27.0.0.1, so same thing, password's password. The Mantis hosts will also have to change. Oops. Too many periods. Metrics is local host. And then by default, 
it's going to eat a ton of RAM with all the locations. Yeah. So if you don't have a ton of RAM, you might have to comment a lot of this stuff. But we're going to go ahead and just assume that you can run the full thing. Uh, so this virtual machine has 4 CPUs, 10 gigabytes of RAM, so this should be enough. So we should just be able to run Core 3. And all being well, it should go ahead and uh, fire up. All right, now the, the firewall wants to let this thing listen, so we're going to say yes to public and private. And it's going to load and basically compile out the game, and you will see memory consumption is going to shoot off into quite a bit. I believe it takes about two minutes for this to uh, initialize. So might be worth just leaving it like this for now and then um, once it's initialized enough the memory consumption will drop off but you do need enough to bring it all up. Oh there we go core ready. So there you go as it stands right now 8.2 gigabytes of RAM. So yeah it is uh, not tiny. Um, and again if you do have a shortage you just need to common out a lot of these uh, planets here. Uh, open with this notepad. Yawn. And that's down here. Yeah, you can comment them out. So comments on this one are dash dash. So you can dash dash a lot of these things out. Like you can see this one simple is commented out. So you can, yeah, remove most of these. I think the only one that's needed is Tatooine and um, the hub. Yeah. But you can probably comment most of them out. Anyway, so that's the server up and running. Um, I believe I modified the SQL to reflect the an ability to create. So that should basically be it. Uh, yeah. If you uh, drop to a prompt here, and that's that an A, and then you can see what's listening, and then you should be able to find all the ports that are needed, which are all four fours. Yeah, here we go. Four four one nine four four five five. Or you can also do like a find 444. And there we go. So we can see that it's listening for all these ports. And this will be the uh, ports associated with uh, the Star Wars Galaxy. So that should basically be about it. So there it is running. Just minimize it. You can bring up the SQL tool thing here. Let's make a new session, so just Maria root, my password is password, and the port is 10,000, and we go open, yeah, save it, why not, and there we go, so we can see the database is right here, and I'm pretty sure there's no real data in here, yeah. But this is where you would go in also to look for Galaxy. So if you have a registered IP address you're going to forward from the internet, this is where you would change this data. You just double click and edit it. And then once it's saved there, then you would go back into your Linux thing and then uh, just shut down and kill it. Yeah, from here you just exit here and then restart. So as you can see, you do need <laughs> quite a beefy machine to run it. Uh, you really want at least 10 gigs of RAM. 
and again you see the CPU utilization. You really want some strong CPUs. Uh, one nice thing about this version, uh, running it with WSL v1, is you can actually see which process is consuming all the CPU. So you can actually look in here and see that the actual server is taking up 5.6 gigabytes. And then you can sort by here, see what else is going on with the machine or CPU overall. But I like this just because nothing's hidden. Uh, the WSL V2 is like a full on virtual machine, so whatever it's doing is kind of hidden from you. So, anyways, hopefully that should be enough to show how to actually install this thing. Um, good luck.